guests, colleagues, friends, students. Welcome to our second folklore lunch with Storm. The first one was not formal because we had a celebration. We celebrated Malanka and the whole winter cycle of Ukrainian uh, traditional uh, celebrations. Uh, and today we have presentation and uh, let me introduce Dr. Irina Skubi. She is an uh, associate professor at the department of, and I love how your department is called, philosophy of human communication, social uh, humanitarian disciplines at uh, Petro Vasilenko Kharkiv National Technical University of Agriculture. She holds PhD degree from uh, Kazarin Kharkiv National University from uh, 2013. She was a fellow at Petro Yasek uh, Visiting Scholars Program at the Center for European, Russian, and Eurasian Studies at the University of Toronto and um, German -Ukrainian uh, and at German-Ukrainian Commission of Historians at the Ludwig uh, Maximilian University in Munich. She received uh, the research grants from Shevchenko Scientific Society in America, Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies and Holodomor Research, and list is long. Um, uh, currently, Irina is um, our visiting professor at the Modern Languages and Cultural Studies and History and Classics departments, we share this position. And she closely works with the Kill Folklore Center, and we are very happy and proud about it. And she is working together with a group of graduate students on our next traveling exhibit, and it will be Childhood. Ah, it's a working title, not everybody <laughs> likes it. Uh, childhood in Alberta, uh, on the prairies in the dirty thirties. Huh. Back to you. Uh, Irina offered uh, one quite recent book, and this is Trade in Kharkiv in the years of uh, new economic politics, 1921-1929, economy and everyday life, and it's from 2017 in Ukrainian. And currently, she is working on a book on consumption in Soviet Ukrainian cities in the 1920s-1930s, female, male, and children dimensions. And I am not uh, even attempting to uh, mention all her publications, conference presentations. For somebody who did her PhD in 2013, Irina quite an accomplished scholar. So please. Thank you, Irina, for your and for inviting me to give um, lecture on uh, the Human Center. And I'm very happy to be here at the University of Alberta during this uh, year and very glad to see a big audience today uh, on Friday. And as you can see, the topic of my um, presentation today is uh, department stores in early Soviet Ukraine. And um, I would say that department stores uh, were symbolic uh, urban spaces in Soviet social landscape and um, they appeared in the middle of 1920s and still uh, are a part of uh, urban landscape in those Soviet uh, countries. So it became uh, also, uh, department stores became also a part of a modern uh, Soviet project um, on construction of um, new urban landscape uh, and also a part of uh, so-called culture trade um, and in general, um, implementing such um, forms of um, consumer spaces, the Soviet authorities tried to discipline um, a new uh, Soviet person uh, and train him or her to, uh, accordingly to a new um, consumer um, trends and politics. In other words, uh, idea uh, to create such new modern spaces of consumption uh, was to uh, teach uh, society to behave in a so-called civilized way and uh, um, in a way how to interact in these consumer spaces uh, in a cultural way. And um, the focus of my research is mostly urban landscape, urban spaces of uh, Soviet Ukraine, 
and uh, here I would like to uh, discuss with you department stores in um, uh, the cities um, in Ukrainian Soviet Republic. Mm. And the main idea of my research is uh, to show the peculiar features of uh, department stores uh, for Ukrainian Republic and um, as that's why um, as this presentation will be mostly focused on the uh, example of Kharkiv, Kiev and uh, Dnipropetrovsk and now it is uh, Dnipro. Uh, as you can see the theoretical approach of my um, study is focused on um, the three important ideas uh, proposed by different researchers from consumption studies um, and uh, I would like to uh, consider department stores as uh, spaces of um, um, public interactions um, and sociability which becomes a product of Soviet ideological and economical politics as well as a mirror of uh, hierarchical structures uh, within the Soviet society. But also I would like to address the, um, uh, the peculiarities of the time when Soviet uh, department stores appeared in Ukraine. Um, so, um, speaking about the ideology of consumption at the time, uh, in the 1920s, uh, the Soviet consumption politics could be characterized as so-called household asketism. Uh, it was a period when the authorities tried to um, uh, predispread the public in the public sphere critical perception about the private ownership and, ma and material possession as well. Uh, while at the same time um, uh, it was a period uh, uh, where scarcities were quite common and uh, there were several commodity crises, so it was rather a difficult period of time, but still it was uh, a period of time when private ownership uh, existed. Since the early 1920s, uh, 1930s, uh, with the development of light industry, uh, uh, the new uh, trend of consumption politics uh, emerged, and uh, now it could be called as industrial pragmatism, when a lot of consumer goods um, uh, could be sold to a Soviet consumer. Um, and a Soviet state tried to, to, uh, to sell as much as possible such new consumer uh, goods and commodities. Uh, so, in general, early Soviet consumption could be considered uh, as the first uh, battle of the culture front um, in the uh, Soviet <coughs> Union. Uh, and since the emergence of the central department stores as an updated and modernized variation, uh, here we can speak uh, about the uh, changes of the ideology of consumption uh, in the Soviet society. Uh, that is why I would like to consider department stores uh, as so-called window displays of socialism and eventually they played an important role in the transformation of urban consumer space and became uh, important uh, spaces of um, public interactions. Um, the emergence of first department stores in uh, Ukraine uh, was uh, associated with the expansion of the network of the state trading um, uh, shops in the early 1920s. Back then it was uh, on named uh, department stores of some um, state uh, enterprises, for example, a department store of Kharkiv Trade uh, Cooperative uh, uh, um, Institution. But uh, uh, at that time the idea uh, was to create a universal type of trade uh, facility trade uh, space as it could offer a buyer a wide range of uh, commodities at one place. Um, and um, uh, certainly uh, 1920s were very a diff different period of time uh, in comparison with 1930s. Uh, at the time um, uh, in the city one can find lots of private cooperative and state-owned stores and um, uh, the uh, 1920s department stores um, belong to the branches of state um, enterprises usually. Uh, back then many of them were located in quite uh, poorly um, equipped premises in um, closed private stores for example. And in fact, um, these were quite traditional commercial establishments, commercial spaces, and uh, not, not a lot of so-called modern changes uh, one can find here. Um, um, for example, there could be some changes in the name of this uh, shop, um, the new variation of uh, commodities, but still it was the same uh, place with no mm, new ideas at all. 
the rapid expansion of the state and cooperative trade uh, network uh, till the end of 1920s resulted in the increase in the numbers of um, uh, department stores. Um, and for example, uh, speaking about the um, uh, example of Kharkiv, in the early 1920s there was only eight department stores uh, in the branches of different state uh, shops. Uh, while in the uh, middle of 1920s there were already 54 uh, department stores. Uh, but uh, certainly um, uh, since the ideological shift happened, uh, the new consumer spaces uh, were built accordingly to new uh, ideas and um, uh, now they were built accordingly to new uh, architectural projects and uh, they were adapted specifically to the um, functional needs of this type of institution. Um, in Kharkiv, uh, the department store, uh, uh, central department store was built in 1933. And um, uh, as the peculiarities of this period of history, particularly for Ukraine, I will uh, discuss um, in the nearest minutes. But here I would like to focus your attention that since the late 1920s, uh, as a result of changes of, of these different ideological uh, contexts, there have been um, significant changes also in understanding the ideas about universal trade. Um, and uh, since the time, uh, the idea uh, from uh, department store uh, uh, changed uh, to the idea that uh, in the biggest cities of Soviet Union should be created central department stores. And here you can see the example that, uh, for example, in Kharkiv, which was at the capital city of Ukrainian Republic, was created the first such central department stores uh, in Ukraine. Um, uh, contrary to the ideological confrontation with other uh, so-called capitalistic countries, here we can see the a new version of department stores um, which uh, was uh, undertaken in practice. Um, the key features of the organization of the space uh, was uh, visibility, new architectural forms, accessibility, um, and uh, these features became the uh, basic uh, ideas uh, around the context of uh, department stores uh, trade. Uh, but the other idea of uh, Soviet uh, authorities was to uh, show the abundance, uh, the prosperity of um, newly emerged country, a uh, country that, that was uh, uh, that having a great achievements in industry and economy. And uh, that's why we can, see, we can explain why um, those department stores in Ukraine appeared in 1933 um, uh, as well. According to the renewed vision of universal trade, uh, they were opened, uh, uh, as you can see, in uh, specially designed uh, buildings, and this building uh, in Kharkiv was built according to the project of Alexander Linetsky, who was quite known architect at the time. And um, uh, the local zoo uh, belonged to the network of state-owned um, Kharkiv trade stock exchange company. Uh, which belonged to uh, the state, uh, and um, this uh, department store was located um, at the Rosa Luxemburg Square, and now it is called uh, Public School Square. Um, and also, um, the peculiarities of the space uh, I will also just uh, would like to discuss with you because um, until 1999, 1999, it was uh, called a trade square. And um, uh, it was a place of um, uh, where affairs and different um, events uh, took place back then in 19th century. And uh, also uh, since the end of 19th century, uh, it was a place where it was built as a trade rose, uh, which successfully existed uh, till uh, 1917. Uh, it also should be said that such idea about um, um, succession and legacy of all spaces of consumption uh, was a very um, a common feature for Soviet uh, economic politics and uh, the uh, places where these new department stores were built. Um, and uh, the idea was to show the, uh, the legacy and the uh, 
a new perception of these new spa spaces uh, accordingly to Soviet politics. Um, and um, as a, in the vision of uh, uh, Alexander Linetsky, this place uh, should be uh, a concept of new retail space and uh, should be uh, very conscious, rational and functional. And uh, we can see with you that it was constructed um, in constructivist style. Uh, the interior of the store was utilized uh, and um, accordingly to uh, new um, um, technologies and um, also was used uh, foreign experience, domestic experience from local experts and um, um, here we can find lots of examples of mechanization or of booth transportation, uh, new spaces of entertainment, um, open storefronts uh, and different other new locations. Uh, so uh, such department stores have lots of uh, departments uh, uh, of different um, goods um, inside. The other goal of this new consumer space was uh, to show the Soviet consumer uh, examples how uh, they could interact in a modern, efficient way uh, in these newly uh, created spaces. Uh, also, you can see here that uh, in uh, newspapers there were quite a lot of advertisements where one can find uh, the variety of uh, commodities which could be bought uh, in uh, the department store. Um, so, um, uh, the other peculiarity of this department store is that it was opened in 1933, um, which uh, was a period of uh, a peak of the famine in Ukraine. Um, and um, I would say that it was uh, one of the most controversial facts in the history of this space. Um, uh, as many of you know, at the time um, the city was uh, crowded with, um, uh, with peasants who uh, tried to buy something uh, or find something edible. Some of them died in the streets uh, and urban dwellers uh, also uh, stood for many hours in the closed uh, shops um, in their um, plants. Um, and at the other time here we can see uh, those new modern space which uh, should show um, the new uh, consumer um, prosperity of um, of the economy and to show the new way of uh, consumer interaction. So here we can see uh, the ambiguous social uh, idea uh, which could be hidden uh, behind this project. Um, the other important note about Harky department store is um, it was an actually an open shop. Uh, whereas at the same time, um, in the early 1930s, um, uh, there was a rationing system in uh, Soviet um, retail trade. Um, and um, uh, actually, uh, here uh, one can buy everything which he needs, but um, uh, not uh, deficit uh, goods or goods and shortage could be bought here um, at all. So. Um, this system of rationing existed till 1935, um, um, and uh, in fact, um, it showed us the contradiction of the character of consumer space um, um, uh, of department store. Other um, important uh, consumer spaces uh, which were created at the time in Ukraine were uh, also in different uh, regional centers. One of them was uh, Tsum in Dnipropetrovsk, um, which was uh, built in 1939 and opened uh, in 1930, uh, just before the war. Um, and uh, here you can see that it was built in a new architectural style, Art Deco, and uh, still here um, um, was, um, it was built according to this idea about the modern space of uh, consumer interaction. Um, but the most known space of um, consumption at the time uh, was a Kiev department store, uh, which was also opened in 1939. Um, uh, there, are an there was an interesting project, uh, the interesting history behind this building um, because at that place there were different other architectural projects during mid-1930s 
but uh, till the end of 1930s, uh, here was built this uh, department store. Um, and um, this uh, space has, um, had, um, in particular, uh, 15 different um, new uh, uh, locations inside the buildings. And uh, here we can also see with you the plan of uh, assembly line, uh, the new um, technological trends which were implemented um, in, in uh, the project of this building. And, for example, among the different uh, department, the departments, um, uh, we can find with you meat and poultry, fish, vegetables, groceries, uh, and different uh, food uh, items. Um, and in general, uh, Kiev Tsum was um, uh, Tsum, uh, was department store was, which was uh, specialized on food um, commodities. Uh, so it was food department store. Uh, and uh, in general, this specialization show was that uh, till the end of uh, 1930s, the idea uh, behind the Soviet consumption was to show the abundance in the food uh, uh, supply for Soviet citizens. Um, so in general, um, speaking about department stores uh, in Soviet Ukraine, uh, we can see that um, uh, the idea behind this new project um, and interior and exterior was to show the um, uh, abundance and to show the uh, modern architecture uh, which uh, became a common trend of uh, all department stores uh, which were built uh, in the uh, Soviet Union at that time and also in other countries uh, around the world. Uh, but also, um, 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 I would I will address, um, in my conclusion, idea that department stores became an important tool for uh, social engineering. Um, and um, speaking about ideological side of this project, I would, uh, I would say that uh, idea uh, that was hidden behind them was not only to uh, educate a Soviet consumer, but also uh, to show them uh, uh, the best achievements of Soviet industry and economy. And um, at the time, um, Soviet department stores in Ukraine were built uh, in new uh, buildings, which were constructed um, uh, by um, modern uh, and well-known well architects at the time. And um, as in the rest part of the world, in the 1920s and 30s, uh, Ukrainian department stores um, retain a very common um, feeling of uh, shoppers' utopia. Uh, but on the reverse side of this idea, we can see uh, that people uh, still were staying in lines. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a shortage of ordinary goods um, um, in the early 1930s, um, there was famine uh, and um, um, consumption uh, certainly was um, ideologically constructed uh, by Soviet uh, politics. So in general, um, department stores became um, important spaces of urban uh, interaction of uh, sociability and um, uh, that's why I would like to show you uh, in the last slide of my presentation uh, the modern perception of um, department stores. And um, here we can try to discuss with you the legacy of uh, department stores in modern Ukraine. And um, the idea to rename department store in here uh, uh, was um, just uh, last week. So it is also a great uh, idea to have a presentation today and this same day. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. question about mm -hmm. uh, social interactions that were happening in these uh, newly built department stores. Uh, one can't help but think of malls here in the West and how important that space is for social interaction, but I think it's understood and is uh, manifested in very different ways than it 
was happening in, in Soviet Ukraine. So here we have these big food courts with a lot of spaces for just sitting and talking, literally. I don't, I, I don't know, but I don't think that was happening in the time. So could you please expand more on this mm -hmm. types of communication other than the new line, or maybe <coughs> this was it? Yeah, yes, uh, thank you for this question. Unfortunately, I cannot find uh, quite a lot of photos uh, to show you the examples what could you see inside those places. Um, and speaking about uh, the interior of this department store and what uh, with a variety of different uh, departments and locations, uh, here uh, we can find um, lots of uh, different new uh, spaces which was not uh, common for, uh, let's say, 1920s or earlier uh, uh, period of um, in the history of trade and consumption. Uh, for example, there was lots of departments uh, like uh, uh, that uh, were given some kind of services uh, of repairment of some goods. Uh, also, um, there was a service uh, of uh, uh, where some can, can like ask some questions uh, to these uh, people that were uh, working in this uh, era. Uh, so, uh, lots of additional facilities, uh, so-called facilities that, uh, and services uh, that were already used in uh, other Western countries, for example. Uh, lots of examples were taken from Germany, from uh, uh, US uh, department stores, which were quite, uh, uh, had more, uh, had bigger history. And um, that's why Soviet Union was trying to, uh, Soviet authorities and people, uh, experts in this field, tried to uh, mix those achievements with uh, the, uh, their uh, idea, uh, their understanding about the department uh, stores as spaces of uh, trade. And, and here the, uh, they try to show that uh, it could be used as a space of interaction, not only as an uh, old market uh, where people were staying in lines, or, uh, or, but here one could get a lot of other services. Um, and um, for example, in the advertisements, you can see here the variety of uh, different commodities, uh, different branches which were placed at the same um, uh, building. And for example, in Kiev department store, which certainly was uh, bigger uh, than a department store built in Kharkiv, uh, uh, in, in the uh, fourth floor there were lots of different um, uh, facilities for people who were working in those buildings. So it was a modern understanding on, about this uh, place. Um, yeah, so, um, uh, and, and here in the plan uh, you can see the um, idea about technologization of, of the processes inside those, uh, this new spaces, uh, like different uh, new modern um, technologies uh, were involved in the construction uh, of this building. Um, uh, yes, so air, air conditioning, for example, um, and many others that were available at that time. So that's why it was quite um, um, quite revolutionary for the time to implement such project um, in general. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm, <coughs> excuse me. I'm curious how it was the vendors or ven one vendor organized inside. Was it did different vendors set up and sell like an indoor market, or was, or was all the commodities brought and sold under one company and employees from one company distributed mm -hmm. inside? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, actually, uh, all of this uh, building belonged to one state enterprise, so it was one company, uh, and the commodities were taken from different state uh, plants and factories. And uh, these department stores uh, uh, were ordering these commodities from uh, uh, centrally, uh, they were, could be given to them, or uh, they can order uh, um, themselves from special uh, in the plants or factories. Uh, but uh, till uh, the end of 1930s, it was other problem because uh, 
uh, because of these individual orders, uh, those department stores could be um, more independent from uh, central planning, and that's why um, till the end of 1930s um, uh, there were some reorganizations inside uh, the central department stores all around the Soviet Union, and for example in Moscow, uh, central department store boom was uh, recognized, and it was like other department stores, it was uh, reopened uh, after the war. And um, yes, yeah, so uh, the idea was to put in one place different commodities, and uh, here you can see that, um, yes, um, there, there was. Um, uh, in the one side, there was uh, customers, there was people who were uh, trying to have a look or buy something. On the other side, there was sales uh, persons, uh, salesmen, and women that were trying to give and provide some services. And uh, providing these services was also perceived in a new way. So it was not uh, like uh, the services that uh, a private uh, trader could give uh, uh, one uh, consumer. It was a new understanding uh, about uh, the services, and um, there were special uh, trainings uh, given to these salesmen and saleswomen. So, so they didn't barter. In no, no, area. the there prices were price. fixed, and it was the idea uh, um, implemented till the um, end of uh, new economic politics uh, all around Soviet Union, and um, there were no possibility to bargain uh, at all, and yes, uh, no uh, such interactions. Uh, yeah. So, in the second part, the commodities within the, mar the uh, markets were they local or were they? Oh, from abroad. Mm -hmm. um, speaking about uh, the origin of the commodities, um, it's certainly dependent on the location of department stores, and um, it is difficult to uh, to say uh, uh, how many local commodities were uh, sold uh, in one place. But uh, because of the central uh, planning of uh, these purchases. Um, most of the commodities were uh, also provided from different republics, were taken from uh, different uh, fabrics and plants located, for example, in Russian uh, uh, Soviet Republic, for example, or other regions, and uh, where this uh, light industry was quite developed. And, um, you know, there was special uh, regional uh, diversification of uh, uh, industry all around Soviet Union and uh, all of these uh, central department stores uh, were connected between uh, themselves. Uh, but also there was all, uh, other trend uh, which was also um, uh, recognized until the end of 1930s. Some department stores, uh, mostly in the um, Russian Republic, they have their own uh, plans or some kind of services which were producing the, uh, the goods for, for them only. Um, um, so it was more easier to organize uh, some kind of local production for uh, one department store uh, which has special uh, consumer demands. Um, and because of this reason, uh, because of these problems uh, to, uh, to find proper goods for uh, uh, consumers, um, um, uh, department stores still have the problems with um, uh, the uh, availability of goods uh, and um, um, at the time, uh, in, especially in the 1930s, where there was a system of rationing, um, uh, a consumer can buy here uh, only such commodities that, that was not in shortage. For example, uh, other commodities that were in shortage, uh, he could buy in, uh, he could get in a, a closed uh, a shop. Um, because he could be a broker of some plan, for example. Um, so still it was some kind of um, mirror, uh, some kind of way to present uh, the best achievements, but at the same time, um, the organization uh, of, of uh, 
knowledge of this uh, com uh, commodity, how they get to this place was uh, quite uh, difficult and that's why uh, here we can see still the same problems with shortage of some ordinary uh, goods or items. But at the same time, um, uh, in these department stores, uh, we are quite often advertised this uh, novel commodities, for example, uh, uh, some kind of um, uh, shaving machines, for example, for men, or uh, what else? Uh, some, some new commodities that were produced by Soviet industry at the time. Yeah. Thank you. Do you know approximately how many stores existed in 1991 and can you tell us what happened with them after independence? Were they privatized or did they remain state-owned? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so this is a very interesting question and uh, I, I was also working on, on this particular question but I unfortunately I cannot give you the exact numbers but in the most regional centers in Ukraine, there were uh, such two potential department stores. And uh, even in um, uh, smaller cities, there were smaller department stores. Certainly, they were not called like Zooms, but still, uh, there were a big variety of department stores. But central department stores were located in the regional uh, centers of Ukraine uh, and other uh, regional centers of uh, um, Soviet Union. Um, at um, the end of the uh, Soviet Union, uh, since the 1991, um, the history with those department stores was quite difficult because um, now uh, some of them uh, be become the property of uh, private uh, owners and um, with, uh, there was quite interesting history connected with Kiev department store. And, um, um, the problem is that this new uh, consumer space uh, was not uh, needed in this big amount in the early 1990s and that's why some of them were somehow abandoned and uh, they should be reconstructed or renewed and um, um, only uh, later, uh, till uh, the end of 1990s, early 2000s, some of them were renewed and there were new projects uh, uh, for example, here you can see Kiev department store was uh, re reconstructed just uh, several years ago. I suppose it's like seven or eight years. Um, uh, also, uh, the other problem with this department store is that um, some of them still belong to um, stock exchange companies. They have uh, different owners. And um, uh, this store is connected with Kharkiv department store, and this department store is not looks like a modern uh, consumer space at all. It is very uh, interesting building with uh, interesting architectural design, but inside you can see still uh, uh, the um, different departments, different um, uh, different locations. Uh, which looks like some somehow like cells uh, that are um, not not uh, properly organized, uh, old-fashioned, for example, and certainly they cannot attract new visitors and uh, people, uh, tourists, um, and it is the other problem uh, it should be discussed and addressed because. Um, uh, Lots of department stores now in the regional cities of Ukraine are used uh, not properly, and um, uh, they, uh, the, the spaces uh, is used by different private owners, and there are no understanding, uh, like understanding what what they should do with this. Uh, spaces which still are uh, spaces uh, uh, that are located in very interesting uh, buildings and um, we do not have a proper answer uh, what should be do with, done with them. Uh, yeah, so here you can see different problems and uh, certainly they should be discussed. So uh, thank you. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, memories uh, uh, about department stores in different cities. Uh, uh, I consider that you uh, use both photographs, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, building plans, ads from newspapers. Uh, what else can you use to reconstruct this uh, mm -hmm. 
in a history of department stores in a particular city, in a particular mm -hmm. time period. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, it's uh, thank you, Lena, really very, very interesting and a rather difficult question because uh, speaking about early Soviet era, um, we can find here quite a lot of archival documents, uh, personal uh, uh, memories about this period, and certainly uh, we can uh, add to this story lots of personal memories, uh, how people uh, remember those places and uh, these um, ex examples could be very fruitful for this study, uh, I, I believe. Uh, but uh, speaking about the modern uh, period of uh, departments, so for example, uh, while I was uh, trying to analyze uh, what is going on with them in 1990s and uh, 2000s, here we can find lots of other modern uh, sources, for example, uh, this department sort of has their uh, own uh, sites in the internet and uh, half of department stores even create the, some kind of um, um, questionnaire uh, what they should do with this department so and they try to analyze uh, somehow the, uh, like the opportunities of what should be done with uh, the uh, space of uh, consumption. Uh, so it means that uh, it depends on the period and um, 19, 1920s and 1930s um, I would uh, use also here uh, some personal memories uh, unfortunately I have not included them here um, uh, but also um, uh, there are the uh, documents and visuals probably uh, created by uh, uh, during the uh, planning of those buildings by architects, for example. Uh, yes, it could give some uh, understanding how those people constructed those buildings and what the ideas they have uh, during the process. Uh, and uh, I guess there should be some uh, official instructions mm -hmm. uh, kind of yeah. upstairs how to uh, proceed, how to yes. build, how it should be. But also it yes. feels, and I, I can't think of uh, any movies from the 30s, but mm -hmm. it, it feels that there was a lot of uh, scenes and movies happening mm -hmm. in those new department stores. I, I can only think about, uh, uh, right now, about uh, yeah. one example uh, about Moscow, about Zoom, the yeah. uh, group of young people are standing on one of those upper bridges, mm -hmm. and the perspective is like future, yeah. and they're uh, standing and uh, naturally discussing the future. So, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure there yes. should be uh, some type of symbolic uh, yeah. interpretations. Yeah, actually just, uh, during this last month, uh, uh, Kiev department store created a special video that was created uh, to celebrate the 80th anniversary of their department store. And it is quite interesting video, uh, but uh, it does not have lots of information from 1930s, and that's why uh, there are no uh, like opportunity to show you a video right now. But uh, uh, if someone interested in uh, the, uh, this video is available online, and uh, it's very interesting and remarkable. It shows some, mostly the second half of the uh, 19th, 20th century, but, but still uh, just very uh, symbolic uh, space for uh, many uh, people who were living at the time in Kiev and the, who were working at that uh, place. And also, uh, the other source which also could be useful here as, uh, is um, archival collection uh, of trade union of uh, sales people, uh, sales persons that were working in department stores. So um, still lots of additional information could be found in uh, local archives and I believe those, uh, uh, the story about department store could be a story of like one book because lots of different problems could be discussed and addressed. So this isn't about the 20s or 30s, but in Edmonton, those standalone department stores really are not used anymore. They, and mm -hmm. we've got the malls with many little stores in them. Is that happening in the Ukraine now too, mm -hmm. a shift? 
Yes, uh, the, the trend is happening in Ukraine as well, so it is not a unique trend for Edmonton. Okay. Uh, in the uh, outskirts of the most biggest cities in Ukraine, we have a big malls, uh, but, uh, uh, and certainly most customers, most consumers are going to those places. And that's why uh, those places like uh, Soviet department stores are mostly uh, abundant, for example, speaking about uh, smaller uh, regional department store especially um, and um, uh, one of the most successful project is Kiev department store because it was renewed and inside it looks like modern mall and it actually have like modern very uh, luxurious uh, uh, shops uh, that could be found in uh, such uh, depart uh, such malls like uh, in Edmonton and other uh, big cities uh, and that's why maybe it explains the um, uh, their idea uh, why they were successful. Uh, actually, there were a big discussion around uh, those modern idea of um, reconstruction of interior of Kiev department store because lots of these old architectural uh, elements uh, were destroyed at all, um, and this like uh, technology certainly they should be renewed by. A lot of other architectural, like novelty from 1930s, uh, were destroyed, and you cannot find them at all now. And that's why lots of um, around uh, architects and uh, other uh, community uh, there were quite negative perception of this new project. But still, uh, what I can say is that. Uh, the main idea of department store nowadays is to attract uh, new customers and new visitors and to make these spaces uh, available and uh, uh, places of social interaction still. And uh, that's why um, I, uh, I, I would suggest to uh, renew their perception, to make them understandable by modern uh, society. Thank you very much for a very beautiful presentation. Um, I wanted to ask about children, mm -hmm. whether these departmental stores had any spaces intended for children to entertain them or to treat them as consumers. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so that's a very uh, good question because those uh, consumption spaces were created for different uh, 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 different type of consumer, different faces of consumers, and children as well. And in uh, those department stores, uh, could be find canteens for children, and uh, 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 parents can leave uh, their children here and uh, go uh, to buy something for themselves. Um, so uh, it was something modern; it was known uh, before, um, and. Um, uh, for example, in uh, Moscow department store, so, so certainly it was one of the modern, and uh, it had the uh, like uh, more opportunities than other department store in different regions. Uh, it, Moscow department store have uh, own um, lands and factories that uh, were uh, 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 creating uh, children toys. And um, as it's why the variety of children toys certainly were bigger in uh, most of department store. But uh, as for the other uh, department stores, particularly in Ukraine, um, um, there, uh, there were uh, children um, departments inside those buildings, uh, and um, family can uh, go particularly to those departments and buy children toys and uh, commodities and children clothes as well. Um, um, so uh, some kind of children's spaces were created here, but yes, uh, still it was uh, something modern for the time, something new and uh, some kind of novelty, uh, um, uh, which uh, could not be found in the previous time or in private shops, for example. Um, maybe in this advertisement we can find something. Yeah, there about is it. Uh, uh, children. Yeah. Special yeah, so so at least now children were perceived as an uh, uh, independent consumer, as an uh, other type of consumer, and it was also uh, the uh, other variation of um, uh, Soviet uh, politics in the field of childhood, Soviet childhood politics at the time, because children were perceived as um, 
flowers of socialism and they should be given the best of the best and, and that's why it was also implemented in, uh, in the, uh, this new space, spaces as well. They're talking about um, yeah, yeah. yes. But they're talking about children, by the way. Um, I I'm not sure it's a part of your research, but you probably know the similar kind of uh, mall that was called Dietsky Mir, yeah. mm -hmm. which is kind of the same thing, but mm -hmm. with children, many yeah. children. Would. So. Um, did you have a look on this one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, uh, uh, th those uh, children department stores were certainly uh, mostly a part of uh, consumer space in the second half of 20th century. Uh, the most remarkable one was Moscow uh, uh, children department store, but uh, here in 1930s uh, those children department store wasn't separated. Uh, they uh, didn't, uh, they were not placed at other uh, location and other building. Uh, but uh, here you can see that they were in these buildings, but in other uh, different locations inside those buildings, but not in a separate, uh, which was implemented only after the Second World War uh, in 1950s. And also it was a new uh, ideological um, and politics uh, towards consumption, and that's why uh, since that time it was possible to implement such uh, projects um, yeah, mm -hmm. because of the changes in this ideological perception. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.